Todd Huffman is the CEO of a company called 3Scan that has a very interesting technology that's being applied in biodiscovery, so we're going to give him a chance to tell us about it. Thank you. Um, and actually, before I start, um, I want to thank uh, Lindy and Breakout Labs. Uh, they were our first money in, and I can tell you that um, if you're starting a bio company, you should absolutely talk to them because it's the best deal you ever, you'll ever get, and it's the most help you'll ever get. So um, the stuff that, we, we, that I'm showing you wouldn't be possible without her. So um, my company is called 3Scan, and we're an automation and information company, and we focus in on tissues. Now, most of the time when you hear about bioinformatics, people are talking about uh, DNA, RNA, proteins. Well, as you move up through the scales, there are some things that really can't be reduced down to that level. So things like cancer, Alzheimer's disease, or even if, as we get into the 3D printing of tissues and organs, you're going to need tissue scale um, digitization autom automation. Now, things are currently done um, uh, when you're looking at tissues, they're done by pathologists. And so that's my favorite pathologist over there in black and white, Ramoni Cajal in 1887 in his lab. And this is a modern pathologist I pulled off of Google image search. You'll notice that they're sitting in the exact same position relative to the microscope. The, work the workflow really hasn't changed since the 1880s. And so what we've done at 3Scan is we've taken the, the, the microscopy workflow where you start with a tissue block, you, you, you slice it up, you put it onto a piece of glass, you put it into a microscope, you look through the microscope. We, we've taken that process and we've automated it. Now, in the span of five minutes, I can't really get into a satisfactory technical des description, but if you're, if you're a microscopist, we've taken the microtome and the microscope and put, put them into one robot where we image continuously while we slice. For those of you, for those of you who aren't microscopists, the thing that allows us to do is instead of doing 12 slices an hour that a human can do, we're doing 3,600 slices an hour because we removed all the human hands from that process. And so that, that, um, that, um, that speed up of, of orders of magnitude allows us to think about microscopy in a very different way. So if you get cancer, the, the pathologist who examines it will, will look at a half dozen slices, and they'll be looking at, looking at them in two dimensions, and they'll be making qualitative decisions on what they see. Um, this is uh, the microvasculature of a mouse brain. This is raw data coming out of our microscope. Um, it's actually not uh, fully raw because this is a terabyte of imagery. Um, it's 50,000 slices that we did over, uh, over the course of 14 hours. And so instead of taking you know, six or seven slices out of a sample, we can do thousands. Uh, and that allows us to look at things in 3D. It, allows, it also allows us to look at things digitally. A human can't look at a terabyte of imagery, and so we write algorithms that go through and trace the structures. And so this, this is a, a, um, uh, out of the, the previous data set that I showed you. Um, we're zoomed in and we're looking at the capillaries. And so we, we've done a 3D visualization of the capillaries where the capillaries are in red and it changes colors, it moves up the size scales. And so this, this helps the, the biologists or the medical researchers that are looking at the tissue to understand what's going on because 3D is a complex space to understand. What actually matters more to me is the quantitative analysis that we can do off of it. If you look at the top, we've taken three areas of interest fr from that sample, um, and we can just calculate the number of vascular segments, the total length of the vasculature, surface area, volume, volume is a percentage, percentage of total, fractal dimensions, um, and it allows us to, to take a, um, a manual qualitative process and make it uh, high throughput and quantitative. And I, I think that this is, this is really the, the power of high throughput quantitative biology is Taking, um, taking biology from a very slow manual process and bringing it into what I consider to be a real science, a real engineering practice um, by, by allowing you to work with things that are digital. I've, I've, shown, you, um, I've shown you vasculature um, partially because um, people know what blood vessels look like and so you can intuitively understand what this looks like, but we do this to lots of other kinds of cells and, and have a bunch of variations on our technique. Um, and we're a small company in San Francisco. Um, I love giving lab tours, so if you're ever near 7th and Mission, send me a note and uh, I'll give you a tour of our lab. And so uh, this is our company. Thank you.